Stacey, if you want to respond first. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, unfortunately, not. Uh, you, I wanted to address the, the issue that you said that if you're part of a certain culture, is it part of your power or the only power you have is what you self actualize? To be honest, if all the power you have is by the lack of by a lack of control. You happen to be born in a. You happen to be born physically, uh, body and mind able, not crippled in any way. Hopefully. And uh, you happen to be born in a family that was at least moderately well off. This is your starting point. Without it, you would have other problems. You could have not ever achieved the position you are now achieved. And this is the, the system that you used to get here is part of the culture. The, your will, however, to get here was your own. Um, yes. So and then this is what it boils down to. You will have to use everything around you to get more power, be more self-realized, be more subtle. So when it comes down to what you create yourself, you're not a magician. You're not creating things out of thin air. You're using things to create other things. They were all here before they were be, they were here before you. You're just changing. And you're accumulating your power and your potential through these changes. So it honestly comes out to the lack of a draw. The, the biggest question is of course the anomaly of people who are physically unable to be sovereign themselves, which is why I usually try to say that the sovereignty is not by any means God-given right. It is what everybody achieves. Unfortunately, some of us had drawn the short straw. How to explain that? Well, I'm pretty sure that goes outside the bounds of the discussion. But, but how we should be forgotten? Yeah. So when, when you say physically unable, are you specific, Are you talking mentally or M also mostly mentally? Because like if you have a physical handicap, that isn't completely debilitating. You are very well capable of becoming a vastly powerful individual. Okay, but I mean, as far as self-ownership, 
can do you think people who are even you know uh, completely paralyzed from the neck down do they not own themselves at that if point? they can manipulate other people to do their bidding for them they own themselves it's all about your intellect in influence influence other people the more more power uh, the only power that really comes from you is your mind interacting with the world Oh, uh, I mean, uh, there, the problem, the biggest problem arises when you have somebody who's mentally handicapped, for example, somebody who won the direct extra race of chromosomes. Forgive for that bad analogy. But those people might have much bigger issues of self-actualizing themselves because they're handicapped, because the mind is much more greater than the physical power. The physical power is all, can only get you those thought. Mind is what will get you eventually an unlimited power of the, of the universe, hopefully. Because they can't even understand these ideas. Well, that's that, that's that's another thing. That you're right. I don't know if they can even understand really anything that's going on. Like, Which is you know, so they just have to be taken care of. That that goes into though they have like rights and stuff. I think too because like I mean, Which goes they into need to, like do they have a right to food, shelter, even though they don't understand that they're well, I don't believe such thing as like holy. Well. To what extent, if you acknowledge that these people who have naturally limited capacities for self-ownership, to what extent does their mere existence limit the self-ownership of others? It's, up to, it's only up to somebody who actually owns themselves and actualizes themselves to decide this. No right is God given. I mean, especially people try to say that uh, and eliminate the concept of God of the equation and say. Why is this natural right occurring? Because somebody's enforcing it. Most of the time it's you. Maybe somebody who likes you enforcing it for you. Okay, yeah, but again, to what extent does there exist an insurance to that? Um, all right. It, it would eliminate someone's self ownership if, by default, 100% of the time, someone feels that they have an obligation to help that person at all costs. Uh, however, if a person, if the other person besides the handicapped person recognizes that they have a choice to either help them or not help them, then they can either own the, the decision to help them um, or they can accept the consequence of not helping them and whatever guilt might come along with that. So you think it actually enhances and, and even, even you could say from like a really egoistic pers perspective that um, one should eliminate the guilt that you might experience because it would free you more to do other things. Huh. Well, it's not it's really comes down, it comes down to whether or not you can use them as tools in your uh, self-actualization. If you can, then their existence is not meaningless. Right. The, the other side of the coin is that by helping someone, you might think, well, you're asserting that you have dominance over them, right? Right. So therefore, having more power. Well, so you, you can, can, if those people can but, sustain themselves in society, if they just could, if they just could survive in like a society that you know, faces a lot of self ownership, and they don't understand it, if they just are not taken care of. So social Darwinism. Can I make another point, though? I, I think. Wait, we're, we're just talking about now um, whether or not the self-ownership actually exists in the circumstance. I, I don't think that we've hit on whether or not it's morally right or wrong, whether or not self-ownership has inherent uh, moral goodness or not. Um, you know, we, we haven't established if self-ownership exists, why is it good or bad, right? Um, well, I have a moral center to judge from. So... Right, right. You have to have it's it's relative to whatever other to some other moral theory. I, I don't think that self ownership in itself is necessarily good or bad. I mean, we haven't talked about that at all. I can tell you that self ownership as a concept does exist. Or do you want to pick up on that? Does, um, does self ownership exist in the sense that like you can talk about that and then take the whole time? You know, because oh, you good we, we yeah. get to the whole, the whole everyone's morals are different, but that doesn't work for some people, and then they think that there's some overall moral system and okay. universal I, morals or something. I only, I only
brought that up because I, I felt like we were making normative judgments about self-ownership instead of just descript descriptive ones. Well, if you're, if you, I think it all depends on who you are, if you're, if you are a believer in it or not. <laughs> Well, I mean, who, what types of people, maybe like approaching it from an inquiry in, into what types of people would be in favor of self-ownership? So would a utilitarian be in favor of self-ownership? Would deontologists be interested in it? I mean, obviously libertarians are. What about socialists? Um, are socialists, socialists communist are socialists? <laughs> bourgeois um, socialists? And well, maybe we should talk about it because we're the student of Ring Front from a libertarian stance, I guess, but we could make arguments from the other side. But all libertarians are also different. So it's, but right. Some believe in government that might, you know, protect self-ownership, and some believe in no government because it's all, you know. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to, to, I'm sorry if you want to uh, take the floor a lot. But I think that leaving the beliefs on government aside, I think that if you look at different theories of value, like the locking um, property theory of value and um, labor theory of value, they both have a self-ownership kind of concept tied into them. And socialists actually, uh, a lot of socialists, use um, the ownership of, la of labor as kind of an axiomatic starting point to, to their philosophy. And to that extent, I think that they have a sort of self-ownership thing. Just like with libertarians who go off of a Lockean self-ownership view on property, which is slightly different, um, are also coming from a self-ownership premise. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think like socialists believe that you should own your labor, and that's why they're into workers' rights, and they should all be equal, because, well, I guess, like, if... Labor theory has advantage of uh, has advantage of being based on it's well, well expanded <laughs> energy. Save the labor value. theory of value for the end is pretty Yeah, but it's, it's, it's true, true that <laughs> self ownership then is in a lot of different philosophies. It's just like I guess how then the government will work with it, sort of that right. changes between socialism and libertarianism. But um, I don't know if I could throw out a question or Tyler, did you want to bring the conversation in a certain way? Or uh, no, I, I just wanted to point way. out that uh, socialism isn't necessarily all about government controlling uh, individuals. They could be extrapolated from the um, principle of humans owning the labor, which could be uh, tied in with self ownership. Self ownership, I'm just trying to conclude. You want to say something? I mean, Self-ownership, I kind of have a problem with because I don't see any real ability to explain it on a, like any kind of level. Because who owns? How, how do you own yourself? That implies that there's something that does the owning. And on the other hand, there are competing theories that you haven't even mentioned, like the theory that we all own each other, for example. Like how can you? How, how do you say I own myself? You know, obviously psychologically it's very appealing because we each sort of live in, live in our own. Uh, you know, bubble of, of consciousness, if you will, and we can't really experience anyone else's consciousness. But you know, as we move forward technologically, who's to say that that's going to remain the same? And then once we get to that point, will self ownership even have any relevance anymore? Hmm. Yeah. The ability to exert power and, and manipulate energy in this world is very, very, very much objective, unlike a perception of how its power is being used and whatnot. So in the end, if you are capable of building power and exerting and producing change, you automatically own yourself. Self-ownership is the ability to exert force to... Uh